So what are some of the pieces of evidence an auditor might use when auditing culture? Well, there are a number of, of proxies, if you like, for culture that auditors will use. The one that's used most uh, is surveys, uh, staff surveys. Um, and, and that, of course, can be very valuable. Um, however, uh, it also um, can be a slightly distorting picture um, because it's indirect. You're actually uh, getting a, a view from the member of staff, and it may not be completely honest, uh, especially if there's a bad culture. Uh, if there's a culture of fear, they may not be willing to say the things that they, that they really want to say. Drawing information from, from the HR team, uh, particularly exit interviews, when people are leaving the organisation, they're more willing to be open. Uh, data uh, from uh, customer complaints can be a very powerful way of seeing uh, what's not right and the response to those complaints. But also, actually, um, good, apparently good data where a new product is launched and it's doing almost too well. You know, why is it doing too well? What sort of incentives are being applied? Um, what sort of sales techniques are being used? More and more, however, we're seeing auditors saying, well, we, we need to get closer to the behaviors. And so they're using um, uh, observation and work shadowing. Uh, actually spending time with different people in different departments um, and observing. And whilst initially that feels a bit artificial, a bit like a fly on the wall documentary, um, after a while people forget you're there and they behave as normal. Um, but beha that normal behaviour may not be the behaviour you really want to see. So that's uh, increasingly being recognised as a very powerful tool. For organisations that are auditing culture, do they typically do that on each audit engagement or is it a separate audit? How does that typically uh, work? So when we first looked at this, um, uh, there were some organisations who were focused on a big bang audit of culture. Um, they've been asked to audit culture, so they were going to do a, a culture audit, and it was going to be one audit, and they were going to look at everything. And, uh, but actually, um, as time has gone by, people have realised that's a very difficult thing to do, and a very costly and intensive thing to do. And anyway, it's just a one-off snapshot in time. So um, increasingly, um, auditors are looking at culture routinely as part of their regular auditing activity. And, and that um, uh, brings up, I think, the whole interesting point that many auditors are really auditing culture anyway, maybe they just don't call it that. Because people uh, have to apply controls, controls don't apply themselves, and people behave in different ways. And maybe they're a little bit uncomfortable with the term because it sounds a bit, uh, a bit difficult and a bit vague and a bit woolly, um, but actually um, it's what they've been doing. If they can draw the lessons from those audits together, often it's about joining the dots. So you may, have, you may need to do many audits to build up that picture. You join the dots and then you reflect that back to the audit committee. That's a really rich seam of information.